on the show, four guests have each starred in a brilliant sitcom. And to make them feel at home, let's give them a traditional bit of canned laughter. <laughs> Did you get that? OK, we'll use it later. Let's start the show! <laughs> Running shoes on. I feel quite bouncy. Very good. <laughs> now, uh, listen, uh, first of all, well done, everyone, for making it here tonight despite all that volcanic dust. Oh, dear me. There's Mount uh, Asia. <laughs> you wonder, when was the last time something that unpleasant got ejected from Iceland? Ladies and gentlemen, what a show we have for you tonight. We have a comedy legend in the building. The fantastic John Cleese is here. <laughs> I know. Isn't that? I know. Not really. Really? Seriously, he's back there. John Cleese, our Monty Python, Fish Called Wanda, and, of course, the brilliant Faulty Towers. I know. Yay, the Faulty Towers. Uh, now, I have to say, I love hotels. I do. Ooh, those fluffy bathrobes. I mean, not too fluffy, because then it's hard to close your suitcase, isn't it? <laughs> Actually, I find it quite difficult uh, to go to hotels. I'm always getting recognised. Aren't you the bloke that nicked the bathrobes? <laughs> also here tonight, the star of Doc Martin, Martin Clunes is on the show! <laughs> Martin. It's a clever little pun on that famous brand of footwear. Mind you, it's not the only TV show associated with leathery old boots. <laughs> <laughs> Martin recently starred in the remake of Reggie Perrin. Yeah. All about a man who has a midlife crisis, suddenly hates his job and dreams of having a fling with the woman he works with. Who does that remind me of? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Childs off to GMTV. Mind you, you think, if you look like that at seven in the evening... Imagine <laughs> <laughs> seven in the morning. Like, whoa! Uh, also on the show tonight, star of the hit sitcom Not Going Out, Lee Mack is here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, he is. In, uh, in Not Going Out, Lee plays a man who spends all his time lusting after a woman who's completely out of his league. <laughs> Lee uh, used to be a blue coat at Pontons in Morecambe. What must that have been like? <laughs> Grim. <laughs> Still, I'm sure being a Pontons blue coat, I bet he had a pick of all the women. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Look at those come to bed cataracts. <laughs> And I'm so excited because later on in the show, we'll be meeting one of Australia's best love stars. Can you guess who it is yet? That's right, it's Kath from the hit Aussie sitcom Kath and Kim. <laughs> I know! Jane Turner is on the show. Now, here she is in Kath and Kim. This is her in Kath and Kim. Uh, it, I, I just love that show. Uh, Jane's first big role in Australian TV was actually a role in Prisoner Cell Block H. Yeah, uh, a show all about Australian convicts. Or, as we call them, Australians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, we'll get letters. <laughs> but they'll take ages to arrive. <laughs> There's a volcano! <laughs> but let's get some yes <laughs> First, it's time to send in the clues. It's Martin Clunes! <laughs> hey! Hello, sir. Hello. You sit back yeah. and you're in the middle of the evening. I think you're... There you go, sir. He's not going out because he's here tonight. It's Lee Mack! <laughs> You're very welcome, yeah, sir. Welcome. Sit yourself down. But now, for something completely different, it is Mr. John Cleese! <laughs> I just don't get him. Sorry, sir. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. 
Uh-oh, all right. I'm all right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. John Cleese, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's OK. It's painful. It's painful. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, by the way, just to say, you, you don't, you're not permanently in that. You've just hurt your knee. No, I was having a dinner last night with Michael Palin, and I do not know why, but I got up to go to the loo and I could hardly move. I, I was, you know, I was sort of grabbing onto things to try and get there in time. And it was a very, very um, painful experience, and I've had people in today trying to figure out what I've done. But the great thing is, Graham, I'm having it replaced. I'm having a knee replacement surgery in I three weeks. I think Michael Palin replaced. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the thing about getting old, you know, I mean, things drop off and... <laughs> <laughs> Did you plan to have it replaced anyway? Oh, yes, I was having it replaced anyway in oh, three I weeks, see. so it doesn't matter what happens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's yeah. with a hammer. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 go. Is that the old shrapnel? <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Um, now, obviously, we're very glad you've all made it uh, through the volcanic ash. And, in, in fact, very briefly, I just want to uh, apologise to anyone who was tuning in to see uh, uh, Rhythm Blues star Usher, uh, who couldn't join us tonight, even though the flight paths were opening. It was too late. So he's going to join us later in the series. Now, uh, John, you, of course, you've been in the heart of it. You were in all the papers. I couldn't believe that I was in the papers. You know, headline, man takes taxi. No! <laughs> <laughs> In fairness, it was quite a long taxi ride. Well, yes, it was by European standards. <laughs> Left at eight in the morning and got in at half past two the following morning. Oh, it was, it was Brussels. It was Oslo to Brussels. Oslo to Brussels. Yeah. You didn't hail that taxi, presumably. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the promoters, one of the promoters' best friends from school, who ran a taxi company, and my promoter friend, Kettle Christofferson, <laughs> rang him up and said, will you drive John, please? Was there a lot of pressure in the first ten minutes of that journey? Because when I get in cabs and I hear the first line of, of course, there's too many foreigners in this country, I think, <laughs> I've got half an hour of this. <laughs> I've just been thinking, I've got a day and a half if this doesn't work. <laughs> and the other pressure is, at the end of that journey, given that we read it cost like three and a half thousand pounds, did you tip? <laughs> <laughs> No, I actually... 20 quid I, isn't going to do it, is it? I mean, no, <laughs> what I, and I, what I said to him was, when I go back to Oslo, I want to take you and your wife out for dinner. And he said, deal. That's a deal. very good move. That was good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, nice Saves your money, you know, you're not going back exactly. to Oslo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to try that one in my taxes. <laughs> well, I didn't from Stone, mate. Bag of chips. <laughs> and, uh, Martin, you weren't caught the volcano, but you have... This is uh, the drama. You the have drama. been uh, involved in an earthquake, haven't you? I was in an earthquake in uh, Auckland in New Zealand, but I wasn't, I wasn't sure. It was a very um, camp, I'd say, theatrical, borderline gay sort of hotel. They were very nice. They had opera <laughs> singing in the bar with the waiters every night, and they, they were very kind to us. But I was um, up there and everything shook in the room, and I thought that might have been a... You know, you don't have a frame of reference for earthquakes, do you? I, I was going to ring down and say, was that an earthquake? But I thought, oh, they'll, they'll tease me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I didn't... And it wasn't until I saw the paper the next day. It was quite a biggie, too. But did you think it was just a gay thing or something? <laughs> <laughs> the bedroom shaking, what could it mean? <laughs> <laughs> How rough does his sex get? <laughs> I was a day boy, I don't know <laughs> You mentioned also, and you were there because you're doing a, you're doing a stand-up tour. Yeah. Now, is it going everywhere or just around Scandinavia? No, it's very interesting, and I want to know if this is the same for your show, for example, because what I've discovered is that British comedy goes incredibly well in northern Protestant Europe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Scandinavia, mm-hmm. love it. Holland, love it. Finland, not so sure, but a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, Belgium. But once you get to France, they hardly know any of my no, stuff at all. True, yeah. They don't know anything about... But you're not shrugging. How, how do we know you're funny? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Where is the black tights? The black tights are funny. <laughs> that is not good. <laughs> uh, the, de- the dead it's part is not enough. <laughs> so it's northern Protestant Europe. And I can, uh, I'm doing 25 shows in Norway, Sweden... Blimey. And Denmark. And now you call the tour the alimony tour. <laughs> is, that, is that a joke? Or is it really to make money well, to pay? Yeah, it is. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if people are surprised by the figures, and I've given them before, but when Alice Fair and I split up, she got $13 million and I got to keep eight. But then over the next seven years, I have to pay her a million dollars a year. 